Hello, um, I'm going to do a real quick um, overview of how to create some simple wrinkles using the Adobe Photoshop brush set that I created. It's called um, Folds and Wrinkles, believe it or not. And just to show you how easy it is to create this type of um, digital painting or whatever you want to call it on like a Second Life avatar or if you're using digital painting for just a regular portrait these brushes are a lifesaver. They will probably speed up your <laughs> workflow quite a bit and save you from having to tear out your hair or wanting to cry because I know I've been there. Um, okay, not really. It's just pixels. It's No one's going to die. But Anyway, um, first of all, open up Photoshop. If you have Photoshop CS four and above, you should be able to pull in Robin Wood's um, lovely 3D female AV and I'll make sure I post the link to that file so that you guys can download it. Um, when you do, what you want to do to get to the material for those um, 3D avatars that you can create clothes on is you want to um, double click on that material at the top. Right now I have a 50% a gray fill on the area that I want to start drawing in. Um, you don't have to use that. I just like using it because I can change the color very easily once I have it at gray. Um, and I can show you that real quick at the end of the video. But nonetheless, let me get out of here and I'll show you how easy it is. First, um, the first one I have up is the large fold, but I've reduced the size a bit to 176 pixels because it's pressure sensitive, but the pressure, the tablet I have isn't quite as good as the newer ones that are out on the market today but depending on the sensitivity of your tablet you may want to adjust those settings and you know what type of detail you want is going to really have a big play as to how it looks. Now one of the the great things about these brushes is that depending on how hard you press or the opacity settings you have on the brush itself so you have the paintbrush, there's your opacity setting, I have large fold but I have it set at 176 pixels. Um, that will determine how heavy of the fold or wrinkle that you're going to create. And let's just get started. First, you know, you can just sit there and kind of gently just push some of this stuff in. Now I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but it's a lot faster than if you had to draw this and they look a little bit better than you know having to go in and just do general shading because I based these brushes off of actual shading techniques that people use in digital um, painting so when you're using these it should be a lot easier for you to create folds and wrinkles which is you know primarily why I said created them and as you can see just a little bit of the smudge brush and you can really create some interesting folds very quickly like that was no time at all like I've already got two folds on this t-shirt and I didn't even have to try just put a little one at the bottom here and there's different kinds like there's triple folds and piping and depending on what kind of look you're going for we'll have a you know whoops that was a little too hard see I pressed down really hard on that so Now what do you do if, say, it's not dark enough or you want the folds to have a bigger impact? What you would do is, depending on how you, you, you do your methodology, so you can mess with the levels. Or if you're doing it on a clear layer on the material, what you can do there is just duplicate the layer and then um, merge that layer in. And then that's easy. And here's one of the really cool things is that, that wrinkle and stuff that you're always trying to get on the side. I always hated this is that you know because it's on a 3D file and the texture is being painted directly on you can just go like that. Whoops. Let's see. Like this. See? Oh wow. Look. You don't have to worry about oh wow you know. You don't have to sit there and try and mash it along seams. That's that would that probably was the worst I think before 
you know, Robin was so kind to make these 3D files and get the UV mapping correct because, trust me, I tried. It was not, I couldn't figure out why, but the SL avatar is just kind of wonky. I don't know what the hell's wrong with it. The UV mapping is kind of strange. Um, it's not too strange. I mean, obviously it works, but it, there are a couple little things about it. But this goes across the th seam, and you can do the same thing for pants. Like if you're creating another layer, like usually what I would do is um, I'll create a wrinkle that goes, whoops, that was too hard. I'll create a wrinkle that goes across there, and you can see it goes right across the ending part. So if you have a t-shirt or a dress or a suit you're working on, and you want the wrinkle to extend all the way down, you can, and it's really easy. So um, that's that. Oh, yeah. I was gonna. I promised to show you how to change the color very quickly, and I think I have this in the silk tutorial. But um, let me show you real quick. Um, you have your layer here, and all we have to do is create an adjustment layer for hue saturation. And I'll tell it, hey, I want you to affect that layer, colorize. Wow, that was so easy. You could increase the saturation, and you know, depending on what you're going for. I always like the reds, but there's blue, purple, whatever. Yeah, it's really easy. I mean, that's one way to do it. Of course, I mean, there's always, um, you can always just create a layer style too, color overlay, and then just tell it um, color. I don't really like that as much. I don't think it's as rich or it just kind of looks odd to me. I mean, you could try multiply, but that's obviously not the same color as what you're doing. I'd rather use the adjustment layer because what happens is that that actually gives you a truer color than the layer style. But, you know, to each his own, if you find that you like the layer styles better to do that, whatever. If you like the hue saturation method, that's better too. And there's also gradient. I mean, there's so many different ways to change the color of an object or create something. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you the ability of those brushes in particular because I think that not that many people know about them. And if they did, they'd probably, you know, snap them up. I mean, look at that. That was so easy. Just creating those wrinkles. Can you imagine how much easier this would be than sitting there messing with a Photoshop file or, you know, trying to fit wrinkles that someone else made into your, it, it, it never looks right. I, I never thought it looked right. I always thought, had a hard time with it. And the best thing about a brush is that because you're controlling it, you're making it, that's what makes it better. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you don't have brushes or you don't have a Wacom tablet or a tablet at all, you can do the same effect just by drawing a path. You make sure you're just in path mode, right? And you can go like that. And if you just hit the path, see I'm on a work path, and I tell it, okay, I want you to stroke the path, simulate the pa pressure, make sure you're on the brush, it'll um, do it. However, it does take a little bit of finesse, and sometimes you do have to mess with it a little bit. Like you saw that, that was way too big. You might end up having to adjust the size of the brush a little bit more than this, like your actual size of the wrinkle, and just tell it, okay, now strike the path. Let's see what we get now. That's a little closer. Let me see. There we go. Maybe that'll work. Stroke your path. There we go. That's a little closer to what I wanted. See? And, I mean, no harm, no foul. You can always just undo it. And like I said, if you want to increase the way these wrinkles look, all you have to do is, um, well, you could create an adjustment layer to do that, believe it or not. It's really easy. You just go to levels. Yoink. And I want these a little darker. Right? You know, you tell that it's increasing the levels just a little bit. Let me go back to this. Yeah. See? See? It's bringing out those folds a little bit more. And don't forget, you can always just go back to your normal brushes. And if you want those highlights on there a little bit, just pick a soft round brush or whatever. And then go into your dodge tool. Hit that layer. Oh, that's a little bit big. And you can really sit there and oops, maybe reduce the exposure. Yeah, I think so. You sit there and hit them a little bit. 
anyway, hope that helps and um, hope making clothing. If you get these brushes, you can try them out for free. There's a free sample before you buy. And um, I think I put a set of like two or three in there so you can try them out. And if you like them, you know, go ahead and buy the full set. And not, you can always just work with what you get in the sample. That's fine. And I hope you have fun making clothes for Second Life or making um, digital paintings with lovely gowns. Those are always fun to watch, look at. I love looking at that stuff on DeviantArt. It's so much fun. Anyway, um, thanks, and I'll make another tutorial soon and talk to you guys later.